So do you wanna to try to grow your own food forest? Well, if you're planning on doing it, chestnuts might be the best possible tree for you to try to grow. And in today's video, I'm gonna to try to show you guys the cheapest and easiest and simplest way that I grow hundreds of chestnut trees every year for like no money. The couple of tips I'm gonna show you guys in this video might be like the two or three tips that I get emailed most about and people thank me most about and want me to explain even further. So I figured I'd put this video together today to show you guys my process for sprouting chestnut trees. Because at this stage of the game, I do it a little bit differently than a lot of other folks out there. Most people who sprout their own chestnut trees, they'll do it in like a refrigerator. What? Which might sound weird, but let me explain chestnut trees and a lot of other trees really in, in terms of how they sprout their seed. A lot of cold weather like nut tree crops require what's known as cold stratification. They need a period of time for the seed to get really cold and then it warms back up and then that's when the seed starts to get the signal to start sprouting. And really that's just based on the cycle of winter around these parts. You have the fall, that's when the nuts drop from the tree, it gets cold, you get blankets of snow, and then spring comes and that's when everything starts to sprout. And so my method for sprouting chestnut trees is really intended to mimic that. I used to use the refrigerator method and, and what you do in the refrigerator method is you bag up your chestnuts in some sand or soil, you place it in the refrigerator, you keep it in there for a couple of months, and eventually you start to get sprouts, and then that's when you start to take those sprouts and make them into seedlings. But for me, the only problem with that is you have a lot of risk of mold, you have a lot of risk of rot, you gotta make sure your moisture level inside the bag with the seeds and the dirt is just like just right or else you can have a mess on your hands. The method that I use with the five gallon bucket is, is way easier. And it also has the added bonus that my wife doesn't get ticked off at me when I start to use up all the refrigerator space for sprouting future nut trees. Oh! For people out there though who are starting homesteads or farms or they have homesteads or farms, I encourage absolutely everybody to focus on growing some sort of food crop on a perennial tree. I probably dedicate about, I don't know, 30 hours a year here on our farm to growing various tree crops. That's not a lot of time at all, especially at this stage of the game. When I built our uh, permaculture orchard that you can see way, 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 way back out there, that in and of itself was a lot of work, but that was partially because I did so much in earthworks to create the swales and berms. We put in like 600 trees at once. If you wanted to start at a much more simpler, modest pace, you can put in just like a tiny little orchard like this, and it takes like no time at all to try to manage it. This is the area that I call Allison's kitchen orchard. Got this nice little mulberry bush here, another mulberry here, current hair over here, apple, apple, apple. And it doesn't matter if you're trying to raise livestock or be a crop farmer or really just sustain you and your family. The effort it takes to grow tree crops is so modest and so minimal, but it can pay you off for years and years to come. It's funny, I was actually doing some research on this topic and I found this thing out there where you, you average estimate the yield of a chestnut tree when it's in maturity. That chestnut tree could produce about $10,000 a year worth of nuts for you. I love these nuts. And if you think about the life of a chestnut tree, it's at that peak production level for about 50 years. So you got a half a million dollars coming from one tree. And so the, the idea of having several trees out there, that's really how you can create like a food 401k, right? And I think chestnut trees in particular are a great crop to grow because the nut itself is so nutritious, it's tasty, it's yummy, it can be consumed by people, it can be consumed by your livestock. Imagine if times get tougher, if times get lean, to have a forest of chestnut trees out in your backyard that's like some really good insurance that you got going there. Now I know chestnut trees have their risk, right? So there was a blight that came in the early 20th century, wiped out most of the chestnut trees in North America, but chestnuts are making a comeback. Whether you have hybrid Chinese American chestnuts or you have blight resistant American chestnuts or Dunstan chestnuts, all sorts of varieties, and they can have better odds of surviving and living long, healthy tree lives. The work to grow those chestnuts is so incredibly minimal I feel like you're crazy not to be just sprouting some trees every single year and keeping them growing. You know, right now, actually, if you try to buy bare root chestnut trees on the internet, or from local nurseries even, you're not gonna find any. They're all sold out. They've been sold out for months. A lot of them are selling out for 2021 at this point. And so if you have plans to put nut trees on your farm, I highly recommend 
that you go after chestnuts. I highly recommend that this time of year, right now, here we are in early November, that you're actually sprouting your own nuts. Man, you will save so much money. For example, for me, I, I've spent probably, I don't know, maybe $100 in chestnut seed this fall. And if I think about the return on this, I could probably expect to get maybe 500 trees out of out of this so you know not all the seeds are going to sprout and not all the trees are going to survive long long lives but out of 500 if i can even have a 50 percent survival rate which is what i've got going these days that's 250 trees now if i were to get say two or three year old transplants that i could put into my permaculture orchard you're talking about 40 or 50 dollars per tree so for just being a little patient and for for preparing yourself just a little bit and working ahead a little bit of time you can be in this situation where for the cost of like two or three trees you could have 250 trees that to me just makes Good old fashioned sense. And so I will stop with the commercial for chestnuts and growing your own trees. And now let me show you how to do it. To do this project, you're gonna need a couple of materials. First off, you're gonna need a plastic five gallon bucket. Yes, the humble five gallon bucket found on farms and homesteads across America. Old and in cruddy shape, it's totally fine, go for it. You don't want giant holes in your bucket, but otherwise it's fine. Second, you're gonna need some sand. You're gonna also need some hardware cloth. You barely need any of the hardware cloth, so you could probably even use scrap stuff. Cut a hole at the bottom of your bucket. I usually do a hole that's somewhere along the lines of like a, say, eight by eight circle-ish object. You can use a jab saw, but that will take some time. I usually use a uh, reciprocating saw, and that can get kind of messy, but it's really quick and really efficient and takes no time at all. You cut that hole in the bottom of your bucket. I usually use the half inch hardware cloth and I cut it in a 10 by eight inch uh, piece. Once you have your hardware cloth cut, you can stick it into the bucket. You don't have to fasten it. You don't have to do anything fancy. You're just gonna put it down there. Now what you're gonna do is take a little bit of sand, only about an inch or so deep, and put it in the bottom of your bucket. Then you're gonna take your chestnut seed and you're gonna spread it out and just put it all around. And then you're gonna cover it up with more sand, and then you're gonna put more seed, and you're gonna put more sand and more seed. It's almost like you're making a lasagna. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. And, and you just keep doing alternating layers of seed and sand, seed and sand, building it up until you have used all of your seed or until you have filled the bucket, whichever comes first. I find that I probably don't wanna put more than six pounds of chestnut seed in one bucket um, because then the sand just gets really heavy but you can get a lot of trees in just one bucket like that. And so once you've got your bucket filled, what you're gonna do is pour some water in there. Not a ton, you don't need five gallons of water, maybe a gallon max. The goal here is just to moisten the sand and get the sand wet. And because you have that hole cut in the bottom, it's gonna let all that water drain out. You don't want the water to pool and sit inside the bucket. That's why it's so important to cut out that bottom of the bucket and cover it with the hardware cloth. The hardware cloth in and of itself is important too because you can have rodents crawl in there and so I like to seal off my buckets. I use the hardware cloth on the bottom to keep them from going in from the bottom and then I'll take just a regular plastic bucket lid and cover the top. This process is so stupid, simple, easy. When I make my chestnut buckets for the year, it really, it takes me maybe an hour or so, especially now that I have most of my buckets built. It's like no time at all. Then you've got to dig a hole. How big a hole you need to do, it really depends on how many buckets you're burying. I went overkill this year because I wanted to show off my fancy tractor. You do not need to dig a hole this big. This was just the easiest way for me to dig a hole. But really all your goal is, is just to make sure it's deep enough to bury the bucket and then wide enough to bury as many buckets as you're planning to bury for the winter. Now those chestnuts are gonna rest in that spot for the next several months. I'll probably dig them up in like May, and then once I have them dug up, I'll put them in sort of a nursery bed where I can take good care of them and give them a lot of water and attention for their first few months. And then eventually I'll pull them out of the nursery bed and put them out there in our permaculture orchard. Some people often ask me about when the right time to plant a tree is, and it, and, and it really does remind me of this uh, old Jewish story I've heard before about this Roman emperor who was riding through uh, some town in Israel, I think, 
and he, he stumbled upon this very old man planting fig trees. And the emperor had his guards bring the old man to him and, and he went to the old man to say, old man, why are you planting those fig trees? You're never gonna live long enough to see them bear fruit. And the old man basically looked at the emperor and he said, look, even if I'm not gonna be able to eat the fruit from this tree, I know that my sons will. I think for everybody out there watching this video, whether you're 10 years old or 25 years old or 50 years old or 85 years old, you should be out there trying to plant trees. Try to plant trees that produce food too because I think people are gonna need it. And, and it does so much good for the world. And even if you're not gonna personally be able to enjoy it, other people will. Even if you're living in a house or home right now that you know is not gonna be your forever home, plant some fruit trees, plant some nut trees. Because even if you don't get to enjoy those fruits or those nuts, the people who buy the house from you will and it'll add more value to your property. You'll learn so much about the experience of planting that when you are ready for your forever home, you'll be able to actually take advantage of that knowledge. Look, the world needs more fruit and nut trees, so just go out there and plant some trees, regardless of where you are in your life right now. Plant trees, it will do an act of kindness for the world. Thanks for watching, guys.